So this current exhibition here in, in, in Berlin is really a response to the, uh, my slight obsession uh, with the writings of Robert Walser. I, I came across him years ago when I was studying um, English literature and I read an extraordinary interview um, with the great, great writer Sebald, W.G. Sebald, and he was talking about this writer who had, had written short stories and had developed a personal language of writing where he had written tiny, um, minute uh, short stories in a, in a personal script on scraps of paper. And I thought this was so compelling, this idea that you developed your own way of, of understanding language, that I followed it up and I started reading him and then I became obsessed by, by Walser. And so this whole exhibition really is a way of, of me talking to him, talking to Walser about how language sits in the world, how language is sculpture. For all my life, there have been words, and uh, and I've been using my hands with porcelain. I've been making vessels. I've been I've been um, making the world out of clay, and these two things are, are obviously I'm one person, and they always are, are, are moving in and out, like sort of a breathing in and out, but in in my life. But in the last few years without really consciously making any decision, it's not, it's not programmatic in any kind of way. I found that I've been writing on walls in galleries and museums. I've been using porcelain clay um, to make walls and then inscribing into them so that, so that, so that there's text in, into architecture, into clay. And then s suddenly <laughs> I'm finding that I'm writing into porcelain. And that, 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 and that text is, is, is coming into these almost shard-like fragments of, of porcelain. Um, and then I'm stacking them and leaning them so that you have a sense really of, of how language accumulates, how texts arrive um, and sit in the world. And it's not, it's not about lucidity, it's not about reading um, the text and understanding every single word at all. It's nothing to do with that. It, it, I'm convinced that you can understand the power of words without actually having read every single one. I mean, we know that from reading novels, and poetry. You can understand and feel the, the, the text without actually having read and anna annotated and analysed every single word. So what I'm trying to do with, with these new sculptures in, in, in this exhibition here, a, a sort of speech here, is is actually trying to, trying to understand how we can hold language and understand it, um, and it be three-dimensional, tactile, haptic language. So one of the things you're not supposed to do ever is write on a wall. I mean, it's one of the things we tell our children <laughs> when they're two and a half years old. We say, you know, actually, you know, don't write on that wall because we don't write on walls. I love writing on walls. It's a wonderful, um, a wonderful thing to do. It's a, it's a, it's a, a wonderful gesture in the world to, to, to write onto a wall. Uh, there's a great history of, 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 um, of uh, graffiti behind this. So for this exhibition, I've, I've created a new work, site-specific work in, 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 in the gallery, it, taking one of the great walls in Goethe-Strasse. Um, covering it again with this porcelain. Um, and, then, and then I've written a long text, um, which begins, you start writing. <laughs> so I start, and the text is, is really a meditation on the act of writing, the whole. So it's about how writing begins um, and ends. Um, and it's a conversation with, uh, with Robert Walser. And some of the text you'll see in the, in the gallery you can read very easily, and some of it is smudged and erased. There are lists of words. Some words are gilded, um, are, are picked out in gold leaf um, on the wall. Um, and some I think no one will ever find. <laughs> 
which is fine. So one of the texts that I've written on the wall here quotes Sebal um, talking about ash. And he says ash is between being and nothingness. It's like words. It's a beautiful, beautiful line. And that idea of, of, of this moment, this liminal moment, this threshold moment, where something is present and almost barely present. <laughs> it's, it, uh, it's on the edge of disappearing. Is, is really powerful for me. And it's present for me in, in powerful for me in, in a couple of ways. One is, of course, that I deal with materials that won't survive. You know, I'm making work that will disappear. My objects will end up as shards. That's what happens to porcelain. It will end up as dust. I mean, that's, that's the way it goes. You know, some things may survive, but I don't expect that to happen. I expect my work to disappear. And, of course, words have that same extraordinary quality of being present in people's minds and, and then disappearing, but held within the body briefly. And so I suppose that feeling of, of being just on the edge of disappearing is something that I find very compelling. Um, and it may, may be the energy I put into trying to um, resurrect people who are lost, whether it's people in my family or Benjamin walking through pre-war Berlin or Robert Walser on his walks from his sanatorium in Switzerland. Maybe that's a way of trying to, trying to bring back briefly words and people. So I use lots of different ways of sort of holding um, ideas and objects in the world. Um, sometimes I use freestanding vitrines. Um, and the freestanding vitrine is very interesting for me. It's a way, um, because what it does is, is to frame part of the world. I mean, you, you know, you, you look through it and you see a bookcase, a gallery, people moving. <laughs> so it's like pausing, um, you know, the objects you've put down in the world, the porcelain, the marble, the steel, whatever you've decided to bring together. But so you're pausing the world, you're, you're holding this, this body of air and you're framing it in the world. But of course, the world goes on around it. It's a, it's a wonderful lens, really, into the world. And that's got an extraordinary power for me. But often I'm also making work f for, f for the wall. And of course, for me, you know, by, by putting anything on a shelf, I'm a re immediately in the territory of, of the page. <laughs> you know, you can't, you, I can't look at a series of shelves without thinking about, about the passage of words or, or sounds across, across, across a page. So for me, oh, um, making a, 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 a wall-hung vitrine, making, make, making a, a piece for the wall, I'm talking again to, 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 to language. It's, it's language and objects very much sort of in step. And do you know what? I mean, sometimes I do one thing, sometimes I do another. In, in this exhibition here in Berlin now, um, you'll find, I think, everything I do. I mean, you know, you'll find two years' worth of, 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 of my life sort of on display here, you know, and, and works for the wall and freestanding things and, of course, huge, just huge wall as well. So if you're thinking about the sort of equilibrium of inside the works, you know, how, how, 
how I get to the place where I know work is finished, where there are the elements are sort of are, are placed so that they have the right energy field for me. It's a it's a very iterative process. So, you know, I, I'm in the studio and I have the objects I've made and found and. And the vitrine is open, and I come in early, early in the morning, earlier and earlier and earlier, as I get more and more and more <laughs> excited and engaged with the project. And it's also quieter and quieter and quieter. You know, and I put on my Goldberg variations or whatever I'm listening to. And then it's this, this strange iterative thing about trying to find um, um, an equilibrium between between these different elements, you know, the, the the visual and emotional weight of a piece of steel or a piece of porcelain or a broken shard of porcelain. And and if you look at all the objects stand in different ways or lie down, and I I think sometimes of of Richard Serra's great list of verbs, you know, his great list of transitive verbs that he did in the 60s, where he just made a simple list of all the different ways that you can be in the world. You know, I roll, I, I break, I stand, I, I lean. And, and in some ways, that's what my objects are doing. They're, they're, they've all got these different actions within them. They are all transitive verbs. They're doing things, often just leaning. And there's something about leaning which is very beautiful. Leaning is, you never know whether you're supporting, you, you lean against a wall, and you don't know if the wall is supporting you or you're supporting the wall. You know, you stand on the, on the earth looking down and you don't know whether the earth is supporting you or you're supporting the ground below, below you. There's a wonderful way in which a, a verb, a, a way of being, alters your consciousness of, of of, of, of place. So, more recently, I've also been working with steel, and um, it's very present here in this exhibition in, in, in Berlin, where I've used Corten steel very, very prominently. And of course, the reason for using that, of course, is that it's it's it, it's all about time. You know that this steel has a beautiful weathered patina to it it's 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 it shows time you know it's it's not shiny implacable um industrial material it's, it it shows time it also of course has a history uh, as as difficult as that of porcelain porcelain comes out of painful history of um, of exploration, but and also terrible labour conditions, and and steel, of course, has a, another great terrible history. And and steel and porcelain, you know, heavy materials culturally. One physically heavy, one weighing nothing at all, but both of them with powerful uh, meaning in the world. I use the broken object, the shard, um, in my work quite a lot. Um, it, shards obviously are profoundly interesting things because you know any any broken object speaks of a lost wholeness, a, you know, a, lo a lost narrative. It, it speaks of disjuncture. Sometimes you want that very present in the work. You want to make a box. I do it here in, the, in this exhibition in Berlin. There's a steel box and there's a series of shards and you can see, you can see and feel the, the, the brokenness, the, the history of that. Sometimes you want that hidden. You just want to know that they're there and don't need to see them. Again, I mean, I, I, I return to this strong thing that not everything needs to be in bright light, you know, pinned down. Um, quite a lot of my work, and quite a lot of the work here, you, you can't see what's going on. There are things hidden in shadows, there's shards buried in boxes, there's stacks of these porcelain tiles with 
very complicated texts on them, but you can't read them. And it, it, sometimes it's just enough to, to, to know it's there. You, you know, it's, it's a bit counter-cultural, but not everything needs to be big, shiny, on a pedestal, lit in a gallery, shadow-free, commodified. You know, sometimes it's okay to, to make works which actually are slower, in shadows, reveal themselves over long periods of time. Uh, my last exhibition in, in Berlin, here in the gallery, was called Irrkunst, taking the words of, of Walter Benjamin, that, that actually it's only by getting lost, <laughs> really, that you discover where you're going. I mean, Walter Benjamin was a great man for getting lost. And his books and his writing and indeed his life, tragically, is a series of... of, of journeys where he gets lost within ideas and cities. And that way of, of, of not walking in a straight line, that way of finding yourself through detours, through take, being allowed to pick up and spend a couple of years just reading, well, Walser and thinking about him or obsessing about a history of book burnings in the Renaissance or whatever. Each time you, 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 you take yourself there, you find, of course, that you've been taken. Each time you think uh, you, start a, you, you start something, you think you've got agency. You think, oh, well, I'm going to do a project about, uh, about something. Um, and you find that actually you've lost all your agency at all. You're, you're spending every night, late into the night, obsessively tracking things down, reading things, going to the places that this person lived, um, trying to find the place where they ended their life, whatever. You, you, you find yourself within a series of details, a landscape of details. That's how it goes. I mean, that's how I write my books, years on strange journeys. It's how I make my art. I mean, it's, it's one life. It's a series of detours.